Hey folks, it's Carl with Sterling Health and Fitness. Thanks for tuning in. So our topic today is fascial tensioning. And to speak with us on this today, I have my friend, Dr. Emily Swickle, who is a podiatrist, human movement specialist here in Manhattan. We're coming at you from New York City. She's also the founder of the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy, and thank you so much for joining me. Great to see you. Again. I know. <laughs> I know, this is great. We have a playlist going for you on this, on this channel. I love it. <laughs> So we're talking about fascial tensioning, which I've been, uh, since Dubai, the yeah. Master Trainer Program, the Master Instructor Program, I've been learning a lot more about fascia, and I find it really fascinating. So I was wondering if you could give your take and just explain to us what is fascial tensioning. Sure. So uh, fascial tensioning, fascia is a hot topic. A lot yes. of people think about fascia as... Um, foam rolling, myofascial release, you know, it's this interconnected tensegrity web that's in the body, which is all true. The way that I try to look at fascia is that it is your gateway of information, meaning mm -hmm. that your fascia plays a very important role in how you stabilize your joints. So your joint proprioceptive awareness actually lies within the fascia. And our fascia actually has very specific nerves. It has small nerves. And for anyone who's followed any of the uh, interviews that we've done or any of the work by EBFA knows that I speak a lot about small nerves. Yeah. So the fascia having these small nerves and really it's this interconnected web that surrounds all of our joints, whether it's the ankle, it's the wrist, it's the shoulder. It's this interconnected web of small nerves that when you contract your muscles in a certain way, and the way that you need to contract your muscles to tense your fascia is isometrically. So isometric muscle contractions equate fascial tension, which if you think of the joint, we'll think about the ankle, it actually pulls up all of the fascia and the connective tissue that surrounds the joint. Right. So now your joint is much more stable. Mm -hmm. So you actually have better dynamic joint control through isometric training and fascial tension training. I love it. Yes. So that's one of, the, one of my questions is what are the benefits? Of course, that's one of the benefits. Stability. Yes. Yep. Stability, dynamic joint stability, faster joint stability. Um, the way that we gauge proprioceptive awareness of a joint is through what's called joint position sense. So your ability to perceive that your, your ankle is moving into dorsiflexion or plantar flexion. That's really how your nervous system protects a joint and then you create a motor response based on the shifts in joint position sense. Because we're very dynamic, and I often use walking as the example, is we're walking, impact comes in in less than 50 milliseconds, your foot contact time is less than one third of a second, which means that you have to be, you gotta be moving, you have to be very in tune with the body and the surface, your joints, where everything is in space, that you can't rely on your muscle contractions for that. That has to be a deeper, faster reflexive tissue, which right. is actually your fascia. So our anticipatory response. Yes, anticipatory our response. Reflexive stability. Mm -hmm. So um, short foot, let's talk about that real quick. I know you talk about that a lot. Um, we, you know, this is the part of the EBFA program, short yep. foot. Now that's one way we can fire up fascial lines, the deep front yeah. line, the lateral line spiral. And, um, can you explain just a little bit about short foot for some of the new viewers yeah. out there? So, uh, for those who are listening who have not heard of short foot yet, I definitely recommend. It's awesome. <laughs> Check it out. Um, essentially what it is, is it's an isometric contraction of the intrinsics in the bottom of the foot. Okay? It's also a isometric contraction of your deep front line, which is your flexors all the way up into your adductors, and it's the way that you connect your foot to your core or your pelvic floor. So through that isometric engagement of the foot, you're actually creating deep front line foot to core tension through the fascia, which is ultimately how we're doing fascial tensioning through the EBFA program. Exactly. Um, so it's a very effective. Because we always do it on a single leg, or that's primarily how we do it mm -hmm. is on a single leg, you're actually isometrically contracting the entire leg to your deep core, so the entire leg, which means your ankle, your sotalar joint, your knee, your hip, all of those joints are now increasing their proprioceptive awareness through fascial tensioning. 
and it becomes like a reflex. Yes, and then we can, we can bring it into the upper right. body as well. Yeah, actually that's my next question too. And by the way, I will have a link on the screen. You'll see it because we're going to take you over to Shortfoot because you have a great video on that, several videos. But I'll make sure you can link to that. And let's go and talk about upper body fascial tensioning. Yes. This is really cool. My, my new obsession. I love this, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Becoming mine too. <laughs> Probably more my obsession than Shortfoot, almost. Um, so the concepts of what we do with short foot, which for those who, again, are not familiar with it, you're essentially just rooting the digits down into the ground, okay? So if you think of, for the upper body, you were doing a push-up plank, push-up position, side plank, something in that position. If you were to push your fingers down into the ground, almost like Call it shorthand, I don't know, almost like short voice. I was wondering what you might call <laughs> it. Yeah. You're doing essentially the exact the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you're digging the digits down, which creates fascial tension all the way up into the shoulder joint, which then sequences back to the core. So now you're creating increased joint stability of the upper body. The way that I apply this, particularly in my, my movement, so when I'm doing anything upper body, rings, bars, silks, trapeze, whatever, I will actually activate my joints that way. So I do fascial tensioning as an activation method. So I'll do a few push-up planks, rope my digits into the ground, kind of sequence, sequence, side plank, sequence it. Then when I go onto the bar, the rings, etc., my shoulders are more stable, so I don't get shoulder right. pain. I'm not kind of compensating through any weaknesses, but I'm actually stronger. And you, yeah. you feel that sequencing. So it does translate. It's not just lower body. It's upper body as well, or it's total body. That is so cool. We have so we have with short foot we have foot to core sequencing and we can call it maybe hand to core sequencing, yes, right? Hand this is really yep. what it is. We're digging Absolutely. the digits in. I, actually because I, I was watching one of your videos that you posted recently and I had one of my clients doing push ups where uh, as we were coming up, he would dig the digits in. Ah, okay. So he was sequencing it like short foot. And of course it cut his number of push ups in half. <laughs> But he really felt yeah. the push up. There's a new meaning to push up when you do them that way. Yeah. So it's really cool. Yeah. This is awesome. So let's talk real quick about something that I'm really excited about and obsessed about too is level three. Uh, three. Um, EBFA's level three is coming out next year, 2016. Yes. Yep. So right now we currently have the Barefoot Training Specialist level one. Mm -hmm. Level two, where level two focuses much more on gait. Right. So dynamic movement, how does the body actually load and unload impact forces mm -hmm. in a very repetitive, efficient way. And then level three, which comes out in 2016, more summer, second half of 2016, is all about the upper body. So that would be the hand, it. hand to core, all of the fascial tensioning that we're using with the hand, looking at hand anatomy looking at the shoulder, shoulder dysfunction, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the sequencing and fascial tensioning. If you do it in the right way, you actually help avoid a lot of shoulder impingement, mm -hmm. which is very common. It's one of the most common causes of shoulder pain right. is impingement, and it's because you lose or you get that delay between hand and shoulder. That is so cool. This is exciting. And of course, you'll see links on the screen going up to various things, so we'll make sure you know what this is all about, including the workshops that uh, are offered by e EBFA, and I'll be with you at several events next year. Um, Summit, yep, and then you have your to. Your workshops True, as well. I'm teaching so. level one workshops, and you can find them on the e EBFA site, which there's a link to that here too. So this is exciting. Good. Good. Thanks again. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to visit all the links. Check things out if you're a trainer, if you're a fitness professional. Hop on the EBFA site, look for a workshop near you. They're happening in, what, 28 countries now? Yep, 28 countries. 28 countries. It's amazing. So, all right, thank you. Of course. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Have a great day.